subscribe to bizbo and press the bell icon see boring news turn into enjoyable stories the convoy of trucks stretch tens of kilometers winding their way speeding towards gujarat's kandla and mundra ports where they quickly unloaded the wheat they carried all the way from central and north india because all of a sudden the world's second largest wheat producer india is being besieged with orders after the world's biggest exporter of wheat russia invaded ukraine the fifth largest exporter keeping both their produce out of the market countries across south asia middle east and north africa each of whom used to buy over 100 million dollars worth of wheat from them were left scrambling for their staple diet of bread and roti flour and wheat pancakes meanwhile india has tons of it lying in warehouses thanks to record production of over 100 million tons every year over the last couple of years but it exported just 7 million tons of it largely because india wants to maintain its own food security after having once faced just such a shortage when it had no choice but to import wheat from the us for 2 years under the infamous pl 480 scheme of 1954 Since then the country introduced MSP minimum support price as an incentive for farmers to produce enough wheat and rice so as never to be dependent on anyone else ever again but with granaries overflowing with 2 and a half times above the minimum buffer stock of 7 and a half million tons mandated by the food corporation of india modi tried to correct the imbalance by amending then retracting the MSP act after continuous farmer protests Now, just as he was being presented with the perfect opportunity to export away this excess grain, that too at a bumper price of around four hundred and fifty dollars per ton, far above the MSP price of approximately two hundred and sixty dollars or twenty thousand at which the government buys from farmers, at which price it is normally uncompetitive in the export markets, as Ukraine sells it for even less, two hundred and ten dollars or sixteen thousand rupees per ton. India took a sudden, sharp U-turn. and ban the exports of wheat except for government to government contracts until just a fortnight earlier the government machinery was in full swing to enable exports the commerce ministry was exploring new markets the farm ministry was busy setting up labs to grade wheat railways were giving priority to wheat wagons ports were clearing storage spaces for the expected inflow and the shipping ministry was asked to give preference to wheat consignments but while all this was happening the price of atta wheat flour in india had shot up to its highest level since 2010 fueling inflationary trends in the country britannia warned that they would have to raise their biscuit prices again in may after already having once done so in march because both farmers and traders were holding on to their stock in anticipation of getting better prices the flour millers association complained to the food secretary the hoarding of atta has to stop otherwise prices will go through the roof the export ban did its job and prices dropped back to near msp level within hours but bks the bharatiya kisan sangh among india's largest farmers association was unhappy instead of banning wheat exports the government should have increased msp prices by 500 rupees this way farmers would have got the benefit of increased prices however if the government were to increase msp then when international prices cool down it would not be able to reduce msp without farmer protests also with a total of 23 crops under the scheme there would be calls to increase the msp of others creating havoc with the union budget reminds us of the time when once in the 1980s punjab and haryana farmers reached the waga border to sell their wheat at a higher price to a famine struck pakistan but the government did not relent then as well therefore this time too it will be the government that earns and bangladesh will make the payment as half of india's 7 million tons of wheat exports last year went there where over the last 3 years it has already captured 2/3 of their 5.4 million ton market largely at the expense of russia and ukraine it also exports wheat to sri lanka but after their financial crisis india may only send some quantity as food aid without being paid the government would ideally not want to miss this opportunity especially since prices of oil and fertilizer which india imports in large quantities have all gone up in the international market and a bonanza in wheat may help offset some of those financial losses but their eye is on the country's food security which is why they announced a conservative export target 
we will cross at least 10 million tons comfortably this year. The private sector's eye is on profits and they want to seize the opportunity. India will triple wheat exports to 21 million tons. So big exporters went to wheat mandis and offered farmers prices way above MSP. Result was that government mandis are expected to procure less than half of the 44 million tons it purchased till mid-May last year, just 19.5 million tons, way below the 25 million tons they need for PDS, public distribution system, that provides grain at subsidized rates to ration shops. So, hoping to make up the shortfall, they have extended the purchasing season to end May and also relaxed quality norms, offering to buy even shriveled wheat. Compounding their problem is a prematurely hot summer that is expected to reduce crop output from 110 million tons to between 93 and 105 MT. With consumption in the country being 99 million tons, hardly any additional quantity will be left for exports and will even be reduced in a worst case scenario. And what happens if the crop fails badly and our production falls to 90 to 95 million tons for the next 2-3 years? Our buffers will drain out and India's food security could be threatened. Thus, the caution. Exports of wheat were similarly banned for 6 years from 2007 to 13 after India exported too much and had to resort to imports to cover a shortfall during 2005 to 2007. That export ban led India to stocking up 41 million tons of wheat in September 2019, which the central government soon started giving away as freebies, though they are now having to curb their enthusiasm. Allocation under the National Food Security Act to 11 states were cut, saving 5.5 million tons, reduced giveaways under the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana, and substituting rice instead of wheat saved another 5.5 million tons. The sudden about turn put in jeopardy the efforts of Food Minister Piyush Goel, who used the opportunity he got at a Dubai summit to pass a chit to the Egyptian minister seated beside him. India can give Egypt all the wheat it needs. I request an urgent meeting. He was invited for a discussion the very same day. You should look at transferring your 5 million tons of wheat purchases from Russia and Ukraine to India. His initiative resulted in an Egyptian delegation visiting farms and processing units in Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh and Punjab and port facilities on India's western coast. Now, Egypt is the world's largest importer of wheat and spends roughly 3.5% of their annual budget subsidizing bread, a $5.5 billion opportunity. Shortages in this highly controlled country can find outlets in protests like the 2011 Arab Spring, which were triggered due to similar reasons. This highly eligible bachelor had been negotiating with Argentina, France and the United States, the other large wheat exporters, before India jumped in. Funnily enough, after the export ban, Egypt is now chasing India. We are talking at the highest levels for Egypt to get exemptions from these curbs. Therefore, it is highly likely that the Indian government will honor the contract with the Egyptians who were satisfied enough to confirm an order of between 1 to 3 million tons. In the same manner, the government will likely honor their half million ton commitment to Indonesia, towards whom a major diplomatic effort was unleashed after they suspended Indian agricultural imports in late March due to a lack of lab certification. Turkey, India's regular adversary in international forums, for the first time placed a small 50,000 million ton order on the electronic Mandi Agri Bazaar, providing India with an opening to smoothen the edges with them and improving bilateral relations. However, they will limit their sales in the new markets of Africa, though they have already supplied 1.5 million tons to Mozambique, Tanzania and Israel in April 2022. While India may have to limit its wheat opportunity, all is not lost. It can still export maize, millets, eggs, nuts and fruit juices whose market has also been vacated by Ukraine. And unfortunate but true, India's tea exports can boom too because of Sri Lanka's problems. International trade is increasingly looking like a zero-sum game. One can win only at the cost of another. Both can't win at the same time. Bizbo's Limerick It was a time when wheat was on heat when India had lots and was sitting sweet. But the weather was a bummer, a very hot summer. Now they are worried that they'll have less to eat. You will also find these sources listed in our video description section.